Okay, unit 16, uh, patient's mobility and transfer skills. So transferring to a wheelchair is going to be one of your skills listed in your, uh, your little green skills book and something that we're going to practice in skills lab for your state test. So nurse aid safety, so not only your safety but for the safety of patients. So lifts and transferred transfers are listed as tasks with the highest risk of injury and th you know it happens a lot where when trying to transfer somebody the patient falls they fall on top of you so you're both injured and so it's really really important that you're um, you're doing transfers appropriately you're, you're using lifts appropriately and so we'll talk about some of the, the reasons for the the high risk of injury so number one that you may up, end up in awkward positions and confined spaces so when you're transferring especially into a wheelchair you, having the wheelchair there is taking away some of your room. You're often pinned into corners and trying to kind of negotiate in, in an awkward space. So be really mindful before you start the transfer, exactly kind of picture what you're doing, what you're where you're transferring, where you'll be, where the patient will be, and that helps with this. So workers are often bending or reaching while their back is flexed. So again, we talked about body mechanics in other units. It's very, very important that you're always going to bend at the hips and knees because that's, what, that's how you're going to use your strong leg muscles rather than these weaker back muscles. So for safety considerations, so key elements. So you want to know all these things before you even start to transfer the patient. So you want to know if the, the patient's able to assist with the procedure. And so again, this is really difficult for students in clinical sites because you're not aware of kind of what the patient's um, abilities are. But again, remember, you're always going to be with another CNA, and they will often know the abilities. If you're working on your own and you're in a facility, you also want to make sure that you um, are are aware of that. You ask the patient, you ask uh, part of your healthcare team to find out how much the patient's able to assist. Uh, the patient's ability to bear weight, very important. The patient's upper extremity strength, so are they able to push off with their hands to help lift themselves out of the bed? Are they able to, to move themselves into the wheelchair a little bit? So what is their upper extremity strength? And so things to really consider if someone's had a stroke and they have you know, right or left sided weakness or paralysis, that's important to keep in mind because they won't have upper extremity strength then. So if a sliding board or certain other transfers are used, so does the patient use a sliding board? Their ability to cooperate and follow directions, so this is really important as well. So if you're working with a confused patient, someone with dementia, making sure that they're, they're aware of your directions and they're able to cooperate and follow the directions. That really can lead to injury if, some, if you try to transfer someone, they get scared, they're trying to sit back down while you're trying to lift, things like that. So the patient's size, especially compared to your own size. So if you're a small 110 pound um, CNA and you're trying to lift a 300 pound person, think about what the implications of that may be. So other things to consider, so wounds, so being mindful of if I'm transferring, am I going to be um, disturbing dressings, am I going to be aggravating wounds, surgical sites, so am I, if someone's just had a hip replacement surgery, how exactly am I going to be transferring them, will I be transferring them, those kinds of things. So tubing is really important. You want to make sure, like with catheters or IV needles tubing, that you're going to make sure that you're aware of where those tubing lines are. And if you coil the tubing, to where you can see it on the bed so you have a little bit of slack that will help with with then transferring it'll give you a little bit of um, movement and we'll talk about that in the lab as well so always get help if you're in the danger of removing a tube during transfer so again if you're concerned about anything ever you always want to make sure that you go get another CNA to help you you go get another member of the nursing staff to come in and make sure that you're not going to be um, you know pulling out a catheter tube while you're trying to transfer someone into a wheelchair so transfer belt. So it's a webbed belt, one and a half to two inches wide and 54 to 60 inches long. And this is just so that it, um, it can be cinched down smaller, but just so, so that it fits most um, patients, residents. So larger belts are available for obese patients, and we'll talk about that in the bariatric unit, unit 32. But for um, most residents and patients, you can use a standard transfer belt. So it's as an assistive and safety device used to transfer or ambulate patients. It's for you to 
help you in your transferring. So you'll see a lot of people who say, oh, I don't want to use a transfer belt. It takes too much time. It's really helpful because, again, we're working with um, vulnerable populations. We're working with older adults. And so you're not going to want to be pulling on their joints. You're not going to be pulling on their skin. Again, you can cause skin tear. You can cause... Um, joint injury if you're just pulling and manipulating their joints. So it gives you something sturdy to hold on to and it's at the best, um, the most, the safest way to, to transfer. So during transfer um, and when the wheelchair is parked it's always positioned with the small front wheels facing forward and, and the brakes locked. And so we'll talk about this, it's really important um, if you're, you know, transferring somebody that you make sure that you always have the wheelchairs locked. So that's one of your bolded critical steps when you do transfer to wheelchair that 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 wheelchair is locked. And then the small front wheels are facing forward. So um, that, you know, basically it's, it's in good alignment. So we'll practice this um, in class. The other important thing to consider too with the transfer belt is are there any contraindications to using a transfer belt? So the person has an abdom abdominal aneurysm, you're not going to use something that's going to be putting pressure on that. So there are some contraindications. And so making sure if you ever have questions about that, you contact um, your nurse right away. So the other thing too we'll talk about in lab in terms of transferring is you're always going to want to support, especially if the patient has a weaker side, um, a weak leg, you're going to want to maintain stability of that leg. And the way we do that um, is by propping that leg with our leg. So making sure that you're maintaining stability by actually having physical contact between your leg and, and their leg. So making sure that you brace that patient's weak leg with your leg during a transfer. So moving the patient with a mechanical lift. So unfortunately, we don't have a mechanical lift in lab. So your experience with this is going to be um, in your clinical. And so it's very, very important that you're able to see a mechanical lift. And primarily, they're used um, more often in uh, long-term care facilities. So when you're in your two nursing home rotations, make sure that that's something you've witnessed. As a student, because you haven't been formally trained, uh, you're not going to be ever using a mechanical lift, um, obviously by yourself. It's, it's a two-person procedure anyway, but you're not, you're going to always be with your CNA. So you can observe the whole procedure, but you're not going to be strapping residents in. You're not going to be doing the actual um, performing the actual lift process. You're just going to be there as an observer. So it's important with a mechanical lift. Um, the purpose is moving heavy patients who have little or no ability to assist. So again, we talked about it's important to know how much the person's able to assist, and this is a big reason why. If they're not able to assist, we're going to be using a mechanical lift, okay? So they're safer for both the patient and nurse aid, so um, it's very, very critical that you, you follow the instructions that you've been properly trained and that you do um, exactly what the policies and procedures are in terms of strapping a patient in, but when used properly, they're very very, very safe actually because you're not having to um, be you know transferring that person even a two-person transfer is more risky than a, a mechanical lift used properly so it moves the patient from one surface to another by means of vertical transfer so they're going to be completely lifted. So it's very, very important, and you'll see this in clinical. Patients are very scared of this, and you can imagine um, you feel like you really don't have control. So um, making sure that you're reassuring the patient that uh, you know through this process, because they will be completely lifted off the surface and then placed you know, into their wheelchair or wherever they will be transferred to. Um, so making sure that you're doing a lot of reassurance to the patients that they're in there safely and that, you know, kind of guiding them, making sure that you're not hitting body parts on the lift or you're just being mindful of, of where things are. And again, with tubing, with, um, you know, anything to be considering as you're transferring wounds, dressings, things like that. So there's many types of mechanical lifts used, and before we go to Colorado Lutheran Home and to Lutheran Medical Center, you'll be doing, um, you'll be watching the videos on mechanical lifts and answering some quiz questions. So you'll be very comfortable when you get in there to use the quiz or to use the quizzes to use the lifts. Um, you'll be ready to go. But again, it's just an observation experience. It's not going to be you actually performing strapping the patient in, strapping the resident in.